What's up guys, it's Chris with D-Pad Dubs. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about the lovable off-tank Zarya. I'll give you five tips to playing her with the most efficiency. Before I get going, I wanna clarify that I'm currently a diamond tank with a 65% win rate on Zarya for this season. If you're a Grandmaster, I'm probably not gonna teach you much, but if you're diamond or below, hopefully this guide will improve your gameplay and get you climbing in short order. Number one, at the start of the match, determine who you'll be using your bubbles on. Overwatch is a super complicated game and it can be frustrating, especially when you feel like the people you're going up against are just better than you. But what most players don't realize is that scaling from bronze all the way up to the Overwatch League, players just get better at what we call min-maxing. What that means is minimizing mistakes and maximizing opportunities to get kills or value from your hero at all times. Sure, mechanics play a big part as well, but I'm certain it's a lot less than most people think in these situations that you're losing and you can't understand why. So, an easy way to min-max Azaria is to determine who you're going to be using your projected barriers on before the match so you're getting maximum value out of them and not putting any to waste. Waiting until the game starts to make these decisions or not thinking about it at all makes your brain have to make more decisions in critical times where you should be thinking about other, more relevant things like where the enemy is positioned and what ultimates they have online. The most obvious choice for bubble placement is Reinhardt, and really any main tank you're going to be playing with, Winston, Ball, etc. The next priority for your projected bubble should be anyone that's susceptible to dive heroes. Zenyatta and Ana are perfect examples of this, but it's not just supports. Even DPS heroes like Widow, McCree, and Hanzo are all susceptible to being dove at any time, and your bubble can not only save their life, but also give you an easy 40 charge. My last priority for bubbles is anyone with high mobility or unpredictability in their gameplay. Heroes like this include Tracer, Genji, and Junkrat. Note, I'm not saying don't bubble those heroes, because oftentimes you'll need to, and it's the wise thing to do. However, they are the last on my list in terms of who I will be prioritizing to shoot my projecteds on. Number two, right click and left click management. Quick disclaimer, the gameplay that I have here is not a very good example of this tip I'm giving you, and it's something I'm currently working on myself. Right and left click management helps you maximize the damage you're outputting at all times regardless of your charge. As soon as possible, you want to learn the rotation between your primary fire and your alternate to get max damage. In the first example here, I'm just using primary fire, and you can see how slow the practice bot dies. In the second example, you can also see that just right clicking your target is also pretty ineffective. The third example is the ideal method you should be using to deal max damage. Rotating between your right click and left click is the way to max your damage per second as well as toss the character that you're firing up into the air for easy tracking. Your alternate fire has a cooldown, however your primary does not. Because of this you can rotate between the two different fire types to maximize DPS. Jane has an excellent video on this, he explains it probably way better than I do, Bye. definitely way better than I do, uh, I'll link it here. The last point about alternate versus primary fire is that you should always shoot your secondary when you have one ammo left in your clip. I'm told that it becomes second nature after a while, however I've been playing Zarya for a while now and still haven't picked it up. Regardless, it's the best way to use your primary and alternate fires for maximum damage. Number three, nailing your rotation. Zarya is not a main tank as we traditionally know them because what she makes up for in damage output, she lacks in damage mitigation, both for herself and for her team. With only 200 HP on your personal bubble, you constantly need to be around cover. Even with your personal, the amount of time it takes to delete you with some well-placed headshots can be incredibly surprising. I won't spend too much time on rotation between Reinhardt and Zarya, as this has been covered in a bunch of other guides, but I will briefly say that it's a game of leapfrog, where you step in front of his shield, briefly, take the aggro while charging your weapon, once your bubble's expired, retreat behind Reinhardt's shield, wait until he starts taking fire again, and use your projected on him. This is an excellent tool for taking and making space, and can be incredibly difficult for the enemy team to stop. Zarya's role at low energy in her rotation is to continue this with her main tank, but not necessarily drive the front line forward. The main tank's job is to take the space in the front, and Zarya's job is to play kind of the middle front. keeping a close eye on the support in DPS that will need her projected barriers to win each of their unique engagements and ensure survivability. 
With you playing more of a protective farming role, you're able to significantly extend team fights in your favor until you've garnered enough charge from the enemy team to start shoving your bean down their willing little throats. A very common mistake from a lot of mid-tier Zaryas is playing too aggressive and forgetting to protect their low HP heroes to extend the fight to a point of pure dominance. Now, once you're high energy, you need to push, push, and keep pushing. If you're in lower ranks and have comms, Tell your team to push with you. You're incredibly dangerous when high charge, and even once a team fight is won, you can nearly always push the other team all the way back to the most favorable choke, or in a lot of situations, back to their spawn door. All right, lastly, I said it earlier, but I'm gonna say it again. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this guide, it's that you need to play around cover. Your Reinhardt shield should not be considered cover most of the time because you don't have control over whether or not it's gonna drop and when. In which case, you need to be next to something that you can immediately protect yourself with. One of the most fascinating things I see while watching the pros in Overwatch League is that they're always, always in a position to protect themselves at nearby cover. Play around cover, win games. Number four, ulting, your teammates and you. It's my opinion that Zarya should be the most educated player on the field at all times about everyone's ultimate charge, the enemy team, but more importantly, your team. Zarya's ultimate, Grav, is one of the best CC ults of all time, but without a team to capitalize with you, it does nothing. I know this tip isn't super unique, but it's so important and such a common mistake that I see to this day of Zarya's throwing their Grav into the mix because they think it can win them the team fight on its own. But you need significant damage dealing heroes on your team to capitalize on your grab during the regular fight or another ultimate on your team to pair that with. Before you enter a team fight in which grab is ready, you absolutely need to know the status of the other ults on your team. Ideally in this situation, you communicate with your teammates either with the in-game quick chat, spamming my ultimate is ready, or your headset that your ult's ready to go, you plan to use it, and who should pair with you when you throw it. Another thing about grab is that you need to use it early and often. The CC is so powerful that it can absolutely be used to win team fights early. Usually, the Zarya who uses grab first comes out of the team fight with the win. The second thing about using your ult early is that it's totally okay to use grab to grab just one or two people, and honestly I don't really care who it is. Obviously you want to get max value out of any single target that you ult, think Mercy, Ana, Lucio, or the best case situation of all time, a nanobladed Genji, but honestly just getting a single kill at the beginning of a team fight, no matter who it is, can spell a win for your team. The last note about ultimates is typically whenever anyone on your team is using their ult, and I mean basically anyone, including even Zenyatta sometimes, use your projected bubble on them. They're gonna take damage, and will need your protection, plus you're gonna get the easiest 40 charge ever. Number five, don't chase your teammates to bubble them unless they have an ultimate planned. So many times in game, I see someone that desperately needs my help and I have my projected bubble ready to cast, but they're behind a wall or for some reason out of my line of sight or range for my projected. So I rush in behind them trying to get the perfect line of sight to save their life. But what happens to me and to pretty much every Azaria that does this is by the time you get there, your teammate is dead and you are all of a sudden way out of position. In that moment, instead of chasing, know that your teammate is probably making a dive that is somewhat calculated, hopefully, and will be returning to you for your bubble, or probably just more likely, they're making a mistake, and they're gonna die regardless. So don't give the enemy team two kills when they should have just gotten one. It's up to you to decide how much you should chase to ensure your teammate's safety, but the general recommendation and tool for your survival is just don't chase and stay with the core of your team. Hey, thanks so much for watching this Zarya guide. If you liked the content, please like and subscribe. We're a small channel, really trying to grow. As always, thanks for hanging out in the D-pad. Bye. Bye.